I'm working a breakfast event and my phone starts to ring. I answer it and it's my client. My stomach just sinks. She says to me, I'm terminating a contract. And I feel my stomach just, I feel sick. My name is Anita Backham and I am the founder of Anita Planner, an event consultancy business. And I live with anxiety. Ironically, events is the fifth most stressful job in the world, behind pilots, firefighters, and police officers. So I was born, I'm an Australian born Asian, obviously, right? My mom is from Thailand and Laos, and my dad, for ease of explanation, is from Laos. That's a story for another day. Growing up, it was a collision of two cultures my Australian side, where I was born, and my Asian heritage. So I'd go to school, and my two best friends at school were two white girls. I then also went to Laos school to learn how to read and write Laos. I also learned Laos classical dancing since the age of four years old. On the weekdays, I actually also did ballet, and I played softball. And I went to Kelly's house, and where her mum would make us Devon rolls. Do you guys know Devon Rolls are? Yeah. yeah, okay, great. So Devon Rolls, for those who don't know, Devon is like a piece of processed meat and you put mashed potatoes and you roll it up into a roll. It's delicious and it's an Aussie treat. On Saturdays, we'd go visit my granny. She's a matriarch of the family. My mum is one of seven siblings and I had 16 cousins growing up. So every weekend, we'd be at Granny's house and we'd be eating fried chicken and sticky rice. Very different to Devon Rolls. <laughs> Growing up in an Asian household, I felt like there was responsibilities and expectations on me. I was the eldest. I have a younger sister, Belinda. She's four years younger than I am. I was taught from a very young age that I needed to protect her. I need to make sure that she was always okay. Sorry, my sister's here. <laughs> Even when we were fighting, she would bite my thigh until it bled. But, <laughs> but because I was the oldest one, I wasn't allowed to do anything. I had to be the bigger person. I had to be the, old, the better person. My parents were great, but I still felt like I had the responsibility to look after them, to make sure they're okay. They never imposed this on me, but I felt the responsibility. They still love me unconditionally though. I think society also expects us to be a certain way. You know, to graduate high school, go to uni, graduate uni, get married, buy a house, have kids. I was not the norm. <laughs> I was very, very different from the norm. And I think it was the one time when I actually conformed to society's expectations was when I had my first anxiety attack. At 28, I was married, separated by 30. I remember my first anxiety attack Clearly, I hate using the word attack because it makes it feel so, so real. It was my 30th birthday and I was celebrating with my family and friends. We're having a 1920s themed party because obviously it's the last year of my 20s, so it's a very fitting theme, right? I'm an event planner. <laughs> <laughs> so my night started with me crying in the bathroom stall with my sister. My husband was going to be late to my 30th birthday party because he was fixing a car radio. Of all the days to fix a damn car radio. I celebrated with my family and friends. I had a great night, stumbled home. Everything was fine. Monday morning, before we go to work, 
I get up, I go brush my teeth and I look in the mirror. I don't know who I'm actually looking at. So I start crying and I keep crying and I keep crying and I keep crying. I don't know why I'm feeling the way I do. I don't know where these emotions are coming from. I don't know what these emotions are. I just don't know. All I know is that I can't stop crying. So I call my sister and she says to come to her and we'll go see a GP together, a doctor together. I'm living at Piedmont at this stage and she works at Parramatta. It's a 40 minute commute. And I am nonstop crying all the way to Parramatta. We get to the doctor's office and he asks me what's wrong. I say, I don't know. And I start crying again. And I keep crying and I say to him, I don't know how I'm feeling. I don't know. I just don't know. He writes me a medical certificate for stress anxiety and sends me home. So I go home and I don't leave home for two weeks. I am still functional during those two weeks, but every day I message my manager and say, I can't come into work today. It was about a week and a half into it where I messaged him and said, I can't come into work. I don't want to get out of bed. He said to call a counsellor and to make an appointment to go see them. I said, okay, I don't want to lose my job, so I'll do it. I made an appointment the next day and that was the first time I left the house in almost two weeks. When I stepped out, the world just started to spin. I closed my eyes and I crouched down and I touched the ground. I'm okay. I see the counsellor a couple sessions, also have marriage counselling sessions. And by the, time, by the end of it, I decided I want a divorce. At this stage, I did not know I had anxiety. My 30th year was a massive year for me. It was the year that I wanted to get a divorce, but it was also the year that I knew I wanted a 100% career in events. So off I went. I started off as an event administrator at Steadfast, and in four years' time, I managed to work my way up to become the head of events at Stone & Chalk. It was a very steep learning curve for me. It wasn't even a learning curve. It was goddamn rocket ship. It just went poof. It was at Stone and Chalk as the head of events where I had my second anxiety episode. The feelings of anxiety crept up little by little. I wasn't good enough. I'm not experienced. I'm too young. I shouldn't be here. I have no idea what I'm doing. These were the thoughts that were consistently in my head. I didn't, go for, I didn't go to work for one week, less than two. I cried, but I was able to stop crying. The saving grace during that episode was I met my counsellor, Shirley. She is an absolutely amazing, phenomenon, phenomenal woman. The first meeting I had with her after you know, a two-minute conversation, she said to me, so you know your anxiety causes you too. I said, wait, 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 wait one second. I have anxiety? That was the first time I realised I was actually living with anxiety. So when I received that phone call from my client that day, I felt I was a failure. I thought I was disappointed in myself. I also needed this job because I was in debt. I felt all the triggers and warning signs of an anxiety episode coming up again. But this time, it didn't happen. So through the years of counselling and being able to recognise my triggers, 
I was able to manage my thoughts and manage the anxiety that was building up in me. But of course, I'm in events. <laughs> and events is me. So how do I deal with anxiety in my life? Coined an acronym. E-V-E-N-T. E is to experience it, to recognise what the triggers actually are. V is to be vulnerable. It's okay to be vulnerable. E is to embrace it lovingly. And T is to take action, to talk to Shirley, to meditate, to talk to someone, to get support. So I was able to turn my anxiety attack into an anxiety event. Now, I know I'm not alone in this battle. In fact, one in seven Australians live with anxiety. So look around you, one in seven. That's a damn high number. But event helped me manage my anxiety. And even if you don't suffer from anxiety, maybe you know someone who does, someone you love, someone you care about, or it could be someone you work with and you don't know because they're suffering in silence. Maybe event can help them as well because it sure helped me. With anxiety, it's, we need to stop trapping it. We need to give it a voice. We need to treat it with love. And most importantly, we need to set it free. Thank you. <laughs> she was running away from the stage, so we're going to allow her to respond.